So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hope that you are all doing well and staying safe. I'm Mariam Shreff, a senior petroleum engineering student at the Lebanese American University, and I'll be moderating today's session. So welcome to today's second session for the Natural Gas Engineering Internship for Spring 2021. I hope that you have been enjoying and benefiting from this training so far. So today's lecture will be about natural gas liquids presented by a special guest speaker from Egypt, Dr. Ahmad Helmi. Dr. Helmi holds a Bachelor in Science in Chemistry and Geology from Alexandria University, 1969, and a Master's in Science in Analytical Chemistry from South Dakota State University, 1982, and finally, a PhD degree in petroleum geochemistry from Alexandria University, 1999. Dr. Helmi joined the oil and gas industry in 1972, whereby he worked as a lab chemist, process engineer, training manager, and ended his career in the refining industry as a senior manager of laboratories and research at Amareya Petroleum Refinery. After retirement, Dr. Helmi worked as a consultant chemist for Occidental Petroleum Company. Oman and the steam flooding operations at uh, Mohaizna oil field. Finally, he has been an adjunct professor of engineering in three Egyptian uh, universities. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Helmi. So doctor, we are a pleasure to have you with us today. And on a final note, if you have any question related to the technical content of the presentation, please feel free to drop it down in the Q&A section and we will sure try to answer as many questions as possible. Now, without any further ado, Dr. Helmi, the mic is yours. Thanks, Mariam. Hi, everyone. Uh, <coughs> this evening, uh, we will discuss, we will continue to discuss natural gas liquids recovery process. Uh, the title of this lecture, condensation process. But um, yesterday's session, I presented to you uh, two uh, processes, uh, absorption, absorption of uh, hydrocarbons that can be liquids at, uh, at room temperature, uh, then adsorption. Uh, and today we will, we will uh, see the condensation process to recover uh, what we call natural gas liquids that start either from ethane, so uh, and the heavier, we call this C2 plus, or start with, we leave uh, C2 with methane and start with uh, liquefying propane. So we call it, uh, uh, the natural gas liquids will be called C3 plus, C3 and heavier. Again, uh, uh, we presented this, uh, uh, a PT diagram yesterday. I'll, I'll go over it again because it is very important. Uh, the, be, the below given PT diagram represents a wet gas uh, reservoir. The diagram shows that the phase uh, behavior of a given natural gas as a function of pressure and, and temperature. Composition determines the shape of the envelope. It means the position of the envelope this, this is what we call the envelope, the natural gas envelope for each natural gas. It has its own specific uh, envelope. The shape of this envelope, its position between the uh, y-axis, the pressure and the temperature and its inclination like this is characteristic for each natural gas composition. You, can, you may find the envelope like this, like this, or even like this. Okay, it depends on the composition. Uh, let's, let's go to enlarge diagram because it is very important. Here, this is the enlarge diagram. Here is the reservoir, and here are the three method methods of condensing the heavier hydrocarbons. Here is the reservoir, here's the tubing, the production path from reservoir to the surface. As the uh, natural gas uh, comes to the surface, it will enter the gas-gas 
heat exchanger this path from A to B. You see it's at constant pressure, but lowering the temperature until we reach no point B. At point B, either we go on with constant pressure in what we call Schiller, and you will see what is the Schiller for further cooling. We call it chilling, not cooling, from B to C, okay? In order to liquefy the heavier hydrocarbon gases. Okay, from uh, B, we can go, uh, we can drop the pressure, we can drop the pressure and the temperature. The purpose is lowering the, the temperature in order to get to the condensation temperature of the hydrocarbon. Carbon. So the target is lowering the temperature. With constant pressure from B to C, with lowering the temperature with and the pressure from B to C dash, this line represents what we call the self-JT refrigeration. And we use, it depends on, mainly on the valve. So the first one, mechanical refrigeration, line A, B, C, from A to B to C, we, we rely on a mechanical equipment, we call it chiller. In the self-refrigeration or JT Joule Thompson effect, we have A, B, A, B, C dash. And in this uh, method for liquefaction of heavy hydrocarbons, we rely on the valve, JT valve, and we, the third one from A to B to C double dash, this, this called cryogenic refrigeration, we rely on a mechanical equipment again, it is called turbo expander. We will see these three methods in details in the following slides. Again, as I told you yesterday, this uh, line, this line here, uh, the creek on the therm, we call it the creek on the therm. It's very important to determine what type of reservoir we have. We have wet gas reservoir. Why? Because the reservoir temperature is on the right of the creek on the therm. Okay? It is higher than the uh, temperature of the creek on the therm. Okay, so this is the wet gas reservoir that is suitable to have the natural gas liquids as a product. How we get uh, uh, how we get this natural gas liquid as a program as a uh, as a product? We have uh, yesterday the absorption method. We have also the uh, adsorption method. Today, this evening, we have three methods that rely on condensation, lowering of the temperature to reach the condensation temperature, or you can say the dew point temperature of the uh, hydro, heavier hydrocarbons. Okay, you can consider this as uh, introduction to our lecture. This is a technical, here we have technical terms and uh, uh, to organize our, our, the way we look at the three methods. Here, we have the ambient temperature on the left, we have the ambient temperature, room temperature. By cooling, we mean we lower the temperature down to five Celsius. Not to, the not to the freezing. So we can use cooling water, we can use air coolers, okay, in uh, what we call cooling, as cooling medium, right? From five to one, it is called chilling, chilling, uh, lowering the temperature further down five Celsius, below five Celsius. From one, to, uh, to minus 100, all this is all these lowering of temperature uh, is called industrial refrigeration. 
okay? From minus 100 down to minus 150, we call it low temperature refrigeration. And below minus 150 to whatever you can reach, it is cryogenic, cryogenic uh, refrigeration. Industrial refrigeration, low temperature refrigeration, cryogenic refrigeration below minus 150. Mainly below minus 150 to reach minus 161, minus 161 to get the methane liquefied. It is cryogenic. Okay. And also uh, from, from uh, the, I, I should say these uh, term, terms are conventional. The industry use these, uh, these uh, use these terms. So they can differ in their scaling from company to another company. But let's say uh, we have uh, in this lecture, uh, this term, this, these terms working for us. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. So, uh, with uh, we have cooling, we have shelling, we have refrigeration, we have cryogenic refrigeration for hydrocarbon gases. Let's see this uh, slide. It tells us that again we have cooling, uh, shelling, and ref uh, refrigeration, and um, and cryogenic. Uh, notice the boiling points of the hydrocarbons that, that we target. We have uh, ethane, uh, a boiling point minus 89 Celsius, propane minus 44, butane minus 0.5. Look at the low temperatures that these three methods can reach. Mechanical refrigeration can get the hydrocarbons down to minus 20 to minus 40. Why minus 20 to minus 40? If you are using uh, Freon as a refrigerant, the, the, the cooling medium is Freon. It is uh, synthetic. You can, you can prepare it industrially. It's uh, fluorocarbon. Uh, it is harmful uh, environmentally. So uh, if you are using Freon, it can get the hydrocarbons down to minus 20. If you are using propane as a refrigerant, it can get the hydrocarbons down to minus 40. So minus 20 for Freon, minus 40 for the propane shiller. This Freon shiller, this is uh, 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 propane shiller. The JT valve can get down the hydrocarbons to uh, my, from minus 40 to minus 60. Now watch this. C2 needs low, minus 89 to get it liquefied. All right. So mechanical refrigeration cannot get C2 as a liquid. JT valve cannot get C2 as a liquid because C2 boiling point is minus 89. You will have to get to minus 89 and lower to get the ethane as a liquid. Now we go to expensive piece of equipment. It is called turbo expander that provides cryogenic refrigeration. It can get the hydrocarbons down from minus 60 to minus 100. So you can get C2 down as liquid by the turbo, only by the turbo expander, because this is the cooling range, or sorry, the lowering range of its of the temperature that can reach, that can be reached by the turbo expander. Okay, okay. And as you see here, methane minus 161. So the turbo expander by getting lower than into by getting the temperature down to minus 100 is not yet good enough to one turbo expander is not good enough to get the methane liquefied so the methane still in the vapor phase uh, but with the turbo expander the ethane can be liquefied because it can get down to minus 100 
okay, for sure propane with the turbo expander will be liquefied, for sure the butane and heavier hydrocarbons. Okay, here is the first process flow diagram, very simplified for the mechanical refrigeration. This is the first, uh, first, this is, I want to have this. Okay, okay. Uh, we have the three, uh, this, uh, this is the first uh, process for uh, uh, having the natural gas liquids as a product. And as, as I told you before, this is the thermodynamical path for the mechanical refrigeration from A to B. This is gas to gas. Uh, when I say gas to gas, the inlet gas exchange temperature with the outlet gas. So this is from A to B, the gas gas heat exchanger. From B to C, this is the shilling action uh, done by uh, the propane. So this is this process is called the propane refrigeration method. Okay, what I said is here in this writing. Okay. This is uh, the uh, the refrigeration uh, simple refrigeration cycle. Here is the shiller. This is the heart of this process. The, the main equipment uh, part of this uh, process, the shiller. It is like a reboiler. It is kettle reboiler. What kind of reboiler? The kettle reboiler. Uh, where is the propane in this cycle? Here, it, in, it, 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 it is uh recycled here in a closed circle it is in a closed circle uh i would start with the, the uh here we have in this vessel uh the refrigerant which is propane say propane and it needs a valve to lower its temperature down to be to have two phase, liquid and vapor. So we have the liquid and the vapor enter this uh, vessel, the reboiler or the, the kettle reboiler. And we call it here the evaporator because it, its purpose is to let the liquid propane vaporize. So when it vaporizes, it takes the latent heat of vaporization from the natural gas which enters in the tube side it's it's called u tube side here this bundle is called u tube uh, bundle or u tube side of the uh, heat exchanger so we have the liquid propane partially partially uh, uh, vaporized and it is completely vaporized inside the shiller. So it gets the temperature of the natural gas going through the tubes of the shiller, of the, of the heat exchanger, okay? It gets it down until we find here the natural gas with the heavier hydrocarbons turn it to liquids, condense it to liquids. It needs a separator to have natural gas alone and heavy hydro, heavier hydrocarbons as the liquid product. Okay, what's after uh, uh, vaporizing the propane inside this heat exchanger? It goes to knockout drum to separate any entrained uh, liquefied propane before the propane vapors go to the compressor. Okay, from this compression, from this compressor, we need it to be. Uh, we need the, uh, the 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 propane get pressure, and then we condense by this condenser. We condense the compressed propane into uh, uh, in, as a liquid here after the condenser, 
and collected here in this surgidrum for the liquid propane. As you see, it is a cycle, closed cycle, and uh, I asked the students to, to calculate the delta P. This is the, the vapor fraction, zero before the valve. Here is 0 0.41 vapor, point, so it's a nine, uh, nine, nine five, nine five, uh, liquid. Uh, this 9.5 liquid, here it is uh, liquid fraction 0.59. This uh, liquid fraction will vaporize inside the uh, 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 the kettle reboiler or what we call the propane shiller. I think it's enough for this slide. Okay. For the process, it includes vapor compression cycle, uses propane, boiling point minus 44. I said all of this. Uh, and we need a compressor to move the propane from the low pressure side to the high pressure side. As you see, here's the, the low pressure side, and here's the high pressure side, and here's the role of the compressor. We need the high pressure in order to get the uh, propane condensed and then uh, vaporized and give off uh, and take the latent heat, latent heat of vaporization from the natural gas. Usually the difference between the two gases leaving the gas gas heat exchange close to five degrees uh, Fahrenheit um, this means that the uh, the residue gas, the residue gas, and the inlet gas will have uh, a heat exchange, and uh, the difference will be five degree Fahrenheit when the residue gas leaves the shiller. Okay, here is the details, uh, the detailed structure or uh, construction of the kettle reboiler. Here's the propane enters and get uh, over the bundle, the YouTube bundle, then overflows. And the, uh, it has only one outlet from the vessel as a vapor, as you see, as a vapor. Here's the warm gas enter and go through the tubes and get out as cold gas with condensed heavy hydrocarbons that need a separator. Chiller is the heart of this process. It is shell and tube exchanger of the kettle type. Inlet natural gas flows inside the tubes, I said that, and gives its, up its energy and uh, its heat to the cold liquid. So it provides latent heat of opposition to the liquid propane in order to turn into vapor. So the liquid propane surrounding the tubes in the shell here, the propane boils off, boils off, boils off, leaving the shell as a saturated vapor here. It goes out as saturated vapor. Takes a little heat of resistance from, I said that. Okay. Here is a picture of photo of the shiller as it is present in the plant, okay? And here, as it is present in the drawings, okay? I, I intentionally, uh, I, I show this to my students. This is how the Schiller look in the plant. Okay. And this valve, this valve is shown here in this photo too, okay? This photo shows the valve in the propane cycle, refrigeration cycle. Okay. Here is a drawing with more details. What is the more detail here? We can say the gas. Let us let's go to yes. Here's the freon. If we are using freon, it gets down to minus 15, gets the gas to minus 15. If we use propane, it gets the gas down to minus 40. Fahrenheit and minus 40 Fahrenheit equals minus 40 Celsius. Okay. All right. Let's see the gas. 
Where is the gas? The gas will, comes here. Here is the separator, as I told you. The here, here is the condensation. Then here, the separator. The gas goes up, and the liquid, liquid here, 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 enter the distillation tower. The liquid hydrocarbons go to uh, go to a distillation tower. Okay. And from the bottom, we get the product. And from the top, we have the uh, separated gases will go to the uh, residue gas here from the top of the column. Okay. So we have two, pro we have yielded gas here. There should be a, a hydrate inhibitor injected in the line, okay, to prevent hydrate formation. And then it will enter the shiller after the heat, heat, heat exchanging with the uh, product gas, right? And then enter the shiller, get uh, the heavier hydrocarbons condensed. We need a separator. Here's a separator. The liquid uh, phase will here, here heat exchange with the uh, coming gas and then enter the distribution column. The distillation column will separate the light gases here, here, and go as residue gas. And but we said that it should be C1 and C2, mainly C1 and C2. Uh, mechanical refrigeration cannot liquefy ethane, all right? And here we have the, the, the natural gas liquids as a bottom, at the bottom product. Okay. Propane refrigeration plant should need more capital in situ than Freon refrigeration plant. It needs more compress comp compressor compressing power to get uh, uh, to get the uh, propane in the in the propane refrigeration plant. Okay. Here is one more point to clarify the difference between Freon and propane. If you are using Freon, you are, uh, you are not worried about the uh, cryogenic brittleness of the steel, of the steel. But uh, if you use propane, you are going down to minus 40. At this temperature, the carbon steel can be cracked, can turn into brittle substance. It loses its ductility. So you have to use nickel alloyed steel. So propane refrigeration is more expensive than Freon uh, refrigeration. If you use propane as a refrigerant, you will have to use nickel alloyed steel, which is more expensive than carbon steel. Carbon steel can be used with Freon without any problem with its ductility. But if you use propane, the carbon, uh, the carbon steel will crack uh, be, because it will become brittle. So you have to use the nickel alloyed steel, which is more expensive than uh, uh, carbon steel. Okay. Here about the hydrate formation problem, because you are, you are going down with the temperature, the, uh, as you see conditions for hydrate formation, low temperature, Temperature lower than 29 Celsius, and you go down to minus 20 or minus 40. So uh, uh, the low temperature is present, high pressure. Yes, you have uh, the, the natural gas with high pressure, high enough to go through the uh, all these equipments. Okay, equipment. All right. Uh, when it is greater than 38 bar, we you may have liquid water uh, with the gas. And the methane, of course, is present. So the conditions are favorable for hydrate formation. So we have to inject uh, the inhibitor, methanol or glycol, as hydrate formation inhibitor. Before entering the heat, uh, heat uh, gas gas heat exchanger, uh, or before entering the shiller. Uh, or both, you can inject uh, the inhibitor uh, in the, uh, before the, for, uh, before the entrance of the these two 
pieces of equipment. Hmm. Characteristics of propane mechanical refrigeration process. Propane mechanical refrigeration process selected when sizable large amounts of condensates are expected. When the concentration of heavier hydrocarbons, propane C3 plus, or high, you go to you have a uh, you have a wet gas, you have rich gas, so it's better to have uh, the cheapest. Uh, the, the cheaper refrigeration, which is uh, either Freon or propane mechanical uh, refrigeration. Okay, uh, Freon or propane mechanical refrigeration. All right. Number two, propane as a refrigerant has the following advantages. Readily available and manufactured on site at, at nearby refineries. Uh, yes, the, the propane is produced in as a product in the refineries, inexpensive, and compared to the Freon, for example, has good vapor pressure curve compared to other refrigerants. The process can, number three, the third characteristic, the process can produce liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, with high percent recovery, 90%. So uh, I asked my students where the 10% go. If we liquefy the 90% of the heavier hydrocarbons, where the 10% go? Just to make them think while uh, teaching. Propane refrigeration system can operate at the refrigeration temperature down to minus 40. The recovery of this process, C3 85% and uh, C4 uh, 94%, C5 plus 98%. As you see here, it is higher than it is higher than absorption percent recovery. It is higher than the recovery of the absorption process. The least, of course, is the uh, oil uh, absorption process. The second one. The second process is the self-refrigeration, JJT expansion valve, okay? Um, JT means Joule-Thompson effect. If we pass a gas with high pressure through a valve, it will, uh, its pressure will decrease as we, uh, as we have the, uh, the pressure, uh, the inlet pressure higher, the delta T could be, uh, could, could be uh, a large, uh, bigger, and the low, as, as we have high delta P, we have also high delta T because pressure is proportionally, directly proportional with temperature. So as you have higher delta P through a valve, you will have higher delta T also through this valve. The, the, the uh, upstream side of the valve is the high pressure, the high, the high pressure, high temperature, and the downstream of the valve is the low pressure, low temperature. Uh, the valve should be insulated. So when it is insulated, uh, so it is a adiabatic process. We, are, we do this uh, intentionally to keep the process isoenthalpic. So with the self-refrigeration JT expansion, we are having adiabatic process and isoenthalpic process. Uh, okay, this is a field, uh, uh, the, the, the JT valve as it, as it looks in the field without insulation. It should be insulated to ensure that the process is uh, adiabatic and isoenthalpic. No. Uh, uh, in no heat uh, transfer between the inside and the outside. Okay, here is uh, more here more details. As I told you before, this is the uh, heat the gas gas heat exchanger. It is here shown here from A to B. Here's A, uh, the feed gas here 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 the feed gas. As it enters the heat exchanger at point A, this is point A here, okay, here, point A. 
all right? Uh, it exchanges the temperature, the, the, the heat with the outgoing gas, the treated gas, all right? Uh, this is the line from A to B. The line from B to C dash, here is B and here is C dash. So we will go through the valve, the JT valve, right? So we will have the, uh, as, as we get to low temperature, the, uh, according to this, uh, the, the, to this low temperature, we will have what, we, what could be condensable at this temperature it will turn into liquids. Hydrocarbons will turn into liquids. These liquids go to the low temperature separator. So they will drop down here, the separator, and the gas as light will go up and will heat, it is cold. So it will absorb heat from the entering gas in this gas-gas heat exchange. Okay. Let's see more about the uh, liquid, liquid hydrocarbons. Here we have a separator that uh, we have here the product, natural gas liquids, here the products. And uh, in the bottom, we will have the glycol as uh, it can be with the uh, aqueous phase as if, it, as if it is an aqueous phase or by gravity because it is heavy, uh, the denser. So it'll go out and here we will have a stripper to, uh, to get rid of water, any water, any condensed water, or any BTX, benzol, toluene, xylene, that could be dissolved in this water from the gas, BTX from the gas dissolved in this water, will go off to, and vented here. And then we will have the glycol ready for uh, injecting into the entering gas, the inlet gas, the feed gas. This is the process description. What I just told you now is the process description of the self-refrigeration JT expansion process. Okay, theoretical dynamic again, it is, uh, as I said, uh, blind BC dash, here in the PT diagram. Process description, uh, I, just, I just told you that the inlet gas is pre-cooled against the treated gas, cooled further, shielded by the isenthalpic, isenthalpic means constant enthalpic expansion from low pressure, to, from high pressure to low pressure, it means the gas is expanded and it is adiabatic expansion. And this is what we call the Joule Thompson effect or Joule Thompson e uh, expansion through a valve resulting in condensation, lowering of temperature and uh, causing condensation of heavy hydrocarbons and water, if water is present. The condensed liquids are then removed by cold separator uh, in order to separate the gas from the liquid. Here again, we have, uh, I, I intentionally provided my lectures, photos in real life in order uh, to let the students see uh, what they study in the real life. Here's the operator. And uh, here I marked the JT valve, the J. Evolve. How it works, gas to liquid heat exchanger, gas to gas heat exchanger, JT valve, okay, cold natural gas liquid exchange, cold gas exchange. This is, I, I consider it as a separator because I didn't have details, but I only got the picture. So I'm adding these uh, to illustrate to my students. You. You shouldn't worry about the very, very much details of this equipment, but uh, look at this. Here is what I expect as the gas in, all right? The gas in, and it goes in through the heat exchanger, gas, gas, heat exchanger, and several, several pa uh, pass uh, uh, to heat exchange, and then we, uh, it, it is here the upstream of the valve, and here is the downstream of the valve, and this I considered as the low temperature 
separator. The liquids, liquid hydrocarbons getting down and the natural gas uh, 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 after separating the heavy hydrocarbon goes up uh, the separator. Okay. All right. Now we watch this because you will have uh, to calculate this uh, uh, in the quiz. Watch this. <laughs> watch this carefully. For every, this is the rule of sum. For every 100 PSI drop in pressure, you have six to eight degree Fahrenheit drop in temperature. This is the upstream. In this example, we have 900 PSI. Here's the valve. So as, as a fluid goes through the valve, it will have delta P. So here is 900. And we measure the pressure in the downstream. It is 200 PSI. So the delta P is 700 D PSI. This, this is written here. Delta P 700 PSI. In this, on, on using this particular valve with these pressures. Okay, and the temperature here was 80 Fahrenheit, and we measured the temperature here, it is 30 Fahrenheit. Okay, how this goes with the rule of thumb, as you see, 700 delta P, and the rule of thumb say, say 100 for every seven. So we have, we can multiply seven by seven, it is 49, approximately 50 degree, which is according to the measurement is okay. Here was 80 and here is 30. The difference between this and this is 50 degree, which the rule of thumb was uh, able to predict. So when you have upstream pressure and you have downstream pressure and you don't have the uh, uh, one of these temperatures, you can predict the delta T by using this rule of thumb. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Characteristics. Lowering the gas temperature depends mainly on the pressure, on the delta P, the drop of pressure through the valve. More delta P, more delta T, less valve out the temperature, the more condensate we get. The more delta P, the more delta T we get, the more condensate we get. This is the rule of uh, uh, in, in this process. This process is most favored when the raw gas is produced at very high pressure. As you see, you don't spend a lot in this process, just a valve and the separator, okay? And here, tube in tube, heat exchanger can do the rest. So, this process most favorable when it, it is very low in capital investment, right? This process most favorable when the raw gas is produced at very high pressure. Can be expanded to sales gas pressure with no recompression. You don't even uh, have to uh, uh, buy uh, and use uh, uh, a compressor to get the gas to pipeline pressure. If the gas must be recompressed, the process is not selected for the cost of recompression or power requirement. So adding compressor plus its operating cost to the gas plan. So uh, it loses its advantage of capital, low capital invest. To avoid hydrate formation, glycol again should be used as a hydrate inhibitor. Injection point is located at the inlet gas pipeline prior to gas, gas, heat exchanger before here. It is not shown, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Here, here, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here, at this point. All right. Uh -huh. The glycol is dried by evaporating the water and dissolved hydrocarbons in the glycol stream, then sent to the injection point at the inlet gas stream. It's the same as uh, in the previous, the glycol uh, cycle, but the same as uh, in, the, in the propensular cycle. 
Okay. Here the uh, here is the uh, technical data. We 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 use this technical data. I described this technical data before. Uh, I I brought it here uh, intentionally before discussing the cryogenic process. The cryogenic refrigeration process. It, uh, it is thermodynamically represented on the pressure temperature diagram by the line AB, the heat exchange, uh, uh, gas gas heat exchanger. The line BC2 dash represent what we call the turbo expander. Let us see the simplified flow diagram for this process. We have here point A, this point A is here as the gas enters the Gas gas heat exchanger at point A. Point B is here after leaving the uh, gas gas heat exchanger. So point B is here. It uh, enters the uh, turbo expander and leaves. This is uh, when it leaves, it is point C2 dash and it is here. So this is point A on the diagram, is point A, the entrance to the gas gas heat exchanger. Point B, it is here. Point C2 dash is in, on the diagram. It is here at the exit of the turbo expander. What happens to the gas at the turbo expander? The gas has uh, pressure, whatever it is. It can, but it should be enough to turn the uh, blades, to push the blades of the, tur of the turbine, of this uh, turbine, it should be with pressure high enough to push the blades of this turbine. As this turbine moves, the gas pressure, the energy in the pressure of the gas will uh, be lost to move this rotor of the turbine. We are converting the pressure energy of the gas into uh, kinetic energy and also uh, mechanical energy in moving the, uh, uh, the rotor uh, uh, on which this turbine is adjusted. Okay? So by losing pressure, by losing pressure, we are losing temperature too. So that's why we can get from this uh, technique, we can get much, much lower temperatures than the uh, uh, other proceeds. So the gas gets very cold to minus, as we wish, to uh, minus uh, 100. So uh, the even the ethane could be liquefied. So we have C2 plus as liquids, and it will go to the separator. It will drop down to natural gas liquids, C2 plus, and the only methane can be taken from the top and it is cold and it will uh, heat exchange with the entering gas in the gas gas heat exchanger here. Very simple. Okay. Uh, very simple. What about the liquids now? This is a natural gas liquids. Here we have liquids separated because of the cooling effect in the gas gas heat exchanger. Here is the uh, liquids, we call it uh, condensates. It can join this natural gas liquids uh, as a final product, okay? Uh, hmm. The, the gas the gas from from the cold separator will uh, be will go to the gas gas heat exchanger then it will be used to uh, it will be used it will be subjected to the compressor on the other end of that turbine we have compressors the blades here to expand the gas the blades here of the compressor to get the, uh, the, the gas into higher pressure. So we have here on this side of the turbo expander, we have here what makes the gas expand. And we have on the other side of the expander, 
So uh, again, it's one, one rotor that has the two uh, impellers. This impeller is for expanding the gas, and this impeller is for uh, compressing the gas. So we will have this, uh, the gas compressed here to the pipeline compressor. It is very economic. You are, you are using the expansion of the gas to cool the gas and get the heavier hydrocarbons as liquid. And also you are using the, the, this, this, this same effect and co in compressing the outlet gas or the produced gas or the product gas uh, in a compressor driven by the, uh, the, the cooling, the, the, the delta P that takes place inside uh, the turbine. What about this JT valve? This JT valve is uh, bypassed to the, uh, to the turbine. If we let the whole gas go goes into the turbine, okay, what will happen? It will, it may have uh, hydrocarbons condensed inside the impeller, be in between the blades. If this happens, the liquid will uh, cause vibration and can damage the turbine. So we decrease the flow to the turbine to a safe uh, condition by taking some of the gas, entering gas, go through the, this bypass JT valve, okay? So it will, again, lower, it will be low in, in lowering pressure, in lower pressure when it is combined with the expanded gas before entering the cold separator. So this is the purpose of the bypass uh, uh, by installing uh, this JT valve as a bypass to the turbo expander. So this side is the turbo expander, and this side is a compressor. Difference in the arrangement, the way, the, in the design of the blades of the impeller of the turbine, it is different than the uh, design of the blades of uh, the impeller of the compressor. They are, the two are driven by the same rotor, and, uh, and, they are pushed. Uh, they are pushed by the pressure energy of the entering gas. This is the process description of this method. I think the, the the remaining time for the characteristics of the press is much more detailed. Yeah, as you see, the first slide should the first simplify the the first diagram should be versed this uh, simplified to let the students understand the concept of the process. Here is much detailed diagram with, uh, again, with also uh, uh, operating data that I added to this drawing. Okay, okay, let's go to the characteristics. Characteristics, where's the characteristics? This is animation on the YouTube. You can see it. If you enter this, you will see the turbo expander. We're working with animation. The students love this uh, kind of animations. Okay, details, mechanical details, characteristics. Before we end our, temp, uh, our lecture, the characteristics of the cryogenic process. Cryogenic refrigeration process is generally the most technically advanced a high technology type of natural gas liquid recovery method used today. This combines high recovery levels. So recovery levels are, are much higher. Recovery of ethane up to 90%. You, you, you didn't see ethane in the previous methods as liquid. Okay. But, you, but here we can get ethane to 90% recovery. Uh, high recovery levels typically allow full recovery. All the propane will be condensed. 90% of the ethane is condensed uh, with low capital cost and easy operation. As you, as you can buy the turbo expander, the rest is not uh, a problem. This uh, cryogenic uh, turbo expander method less attractive when 
very rich gas streams because it will make the, 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 the work of the turbine difficult, all right? When we have very rich gas stream, it's better go to the simple refrigeration, uh, propane chiller or free old chiller is the best choice. When we have very rich gas, very rich high concentrations of heavier carbons, or where light natural gas liquid product, C2 is not marketable. When there is no demand for uh, uh, C2, why you go to buy the method that liquefy the, uh, e, the ethane? You just leave the ethane with the methane as long as it is uh, below the 4.3%, below the 4.3% maximum concentration. On what basis is selection of one of the three refrigeration processes? Answer, if the available gas is rich gas, then propane mechanical refrigeration process is the most efficient. I just told this in the previous slide. If the available gas is at high pressure, the JT refrigeration process can be uh, economic process and selected. If the available gas is not rich in C5 plus and the, its pressure is low, go to uh, uh, low to operate the JT valve, go to the cryogenic refrigeration process. With uh, not rich in C5 plus, it means it can be uh, advantage, uh, it can have advantage of liquefying the ethane, but you are not targeting the C5 and heavier, you are targeting C2 and C3, okay? Uh, and the pressure is low, go to the cryogenic refrigeration process. This is a question that concludes the three low temperature condensation uh, process. How, how, wh on what basis we select uh, uh, the three? This is the conditions for selecting uh, uh, the propane mechanical refrigeration. This is a condition for selecting the JT refrigeration. This is the condition for selecting the cryogenic refrigeration process. Mariam? Mariam? Thank you. you have I, think, uh, uh, I think the, the time left is four questions, okay? Yes, so oh. thank you, doctor, for this informative session. Now, now we have some questions for you. Okay. Uh, the first question is that, why do we put the JT valve in the cryogenic process or plant? Okay, I said it and I, I will say it again. Uh, we, we have to uh, limit the quantity of gas entering the turbo expander, the turbine. Why we have to limit the quantity? Because if you have too much quantity of gas entering the turbine, uh, it may condense the uh, liquid, uh, the heavy hydrocarbons inside the turbine, not outside. We want to uh, keep the gas in the vapor state until it enters the separator. So in order to avoid condensation of hydrocarbons, liquid hydrocarbons inside the turbine, we take part of the illit gas and pass it through a, valve, a bypass. We put a valve on the bypass in order to lower its temperature to match the pressure coming from the, uh, uh, the compressor, okay? From the, uh, from, that, from the turbine, I'm sorry, from the turbine. Okay. okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, now the second question is that what is the commonly used inhibitor in the industry? Inhibitor, we can yes. use either methanol, but uh, watch for uh, the disadvantage of methanol because it is completely mixed with water and you can't separate methanol from the water. It needs uh, uh, more costs to, to separate them but it is easier to separate glycol from water. It is easier to separate glycol from water. Glycol has higher boiling, much higher, higher boiling point than 
water. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, what is the most usually refrigerant in most refrigeration plants? Propane. It is inexpensive. It is available in the uh, refiners because we, whenever you find uh, oil and gas, there you will find refineries and refineries produce uh, liquid propane as uh, a product. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Now the final question for today. After the gas is liquefied and flows out of the chiller, cooler, turbo expander, what keeps the gas liquid while flowing in the lines? At the temperature of the flow lines is clearly much more higher than the temperature in these three devices. Mm -hmm. Very long question. <laughs> Can you say it again, please, Mariam? Can you say yes, it again? I... Slowly, please, slowly. <laughs> Yes. So the gas uh, that is being liquefied and flowing out of the chiller, cooler, turbo expander. So what what keeps this ca gas as uh, liquefied while flowing in the lines, uh, taking into account that the temperature uh, in uh, the flow lines is much higher than the temperature in these three devices. So what keeps this gas uh, liquefied and not uh, turn into the gas state again? given that the temperature is high. Okay, if I understood what he means or what she means, the, the gas after leaving the uh, turbo expander, okay, it is cold. Uh, the gas after leaving the, uh, the shiller is cold, okay, but the, it, is not, it is not completely liquefied. We have, we have uh, the uh, part of the gas will stay as vapor and part of the gas will be uh, in the liquid state. So uh, uh, liquid state thermodynamically in the liquid state. When it will separate, when the two phases can separate, only in the separator. Okay, so we are not worried about uh, the two phase uh, uh, as, as, as the gas comes out from the uh, refrigerating equipment, whether it is a Schiller or JT valve or cryogenic. The, the separation into two phases is occurring only inside the separator. This is my answer. Okay, thank you, doctor, again for this informative session. I hope that you all enjoyed the session today. As a reminder, please don't forget to submit the quizzes for this week assigned for each lecture. The deadline is mentioned in the Google Classroom. And to highlight, this session has been recorded and it will be uploaded soon on PyoPetra's YouTube channel so you can rewatch it. And that's all for today. I want to wish you best of luck and have a nice day. Thank you.